Are you ready to knock out venous drainage from the abdomen and pelvis? Organs of the abdomen and pelvis drain via one of two routes, either via the portal system or via the cable system. This video will discuss both systems, highlighting the major veins that drain into each. Be sure to stick around to the end of the video when we discuss conditions associated with portal hypertension. For a video on arterial blood supply to the abdominal organs, click on the link above. Starting with the hepatic portal system. The hepatic portal system is a network of veins that drain blood to the liver. This means that blood drains from one capillary bed to the capillary bed of the liver before returning to the heart. What are the veins of the hepatic portal system, you ask? Mostly veins that drain organs of the GI tract, although veins that drain a few additional organs, such as the pancreas, gallbladder, and spleen, are also included. Hopefully this is easy enough for you to remember, since blood draining from the digestive organs has picked up nutrients, which needs to be absorbed and processed. And guess where that processing takes place? In the liver. So it only makes sense that blood from the gastrointestinal tract needs to hightail it to the liver first before returning to the heart to be distributed to the rest of the body. What's our exercise to represent the hepatic portal system? We're going to sink down into a chair position and raise up again. Why? Because the main players that comprise the hepatic portal system actually resemble a chair. So let's begin exercising. We'll look at the splenic vein first. The splenic vein forms the seat of the chair as it travels horizontally along the superior border of the pancreas. I'm gonna guess that you can probably figure out what the splenic vein drains, but it also receives blood from other organs of the foregut, including the stomach, pancreas, and potentially the duodenum. And this is via the pancreatic veins, short gastric veins, and the right gastroomental vein. Thus, the splenic vein acts as a drainage system for the celiac artery, although unfortunately the arteries and veins are not an exact match. The inferior mesenteric vein also drains into the splenic vein, which forms the front leg of our chair. The inferior mesenteric vein drains the organs of the hindgut, which includes the descending colon, the sigmoid colon, the rectum, and the superior two-thirds of the anus. And this is via the left colic veins, sigmoid veins, and the superior rectal vein. Sound familiar? That's because the inferior mesenteric vein, as well as its tributaries, matches that of the inferior mesenteric artery and its branches. The back leg of the chair is formed by the superior mesenteric vein. This vein drains the midgut organs, which includes the jejunum, the ilium, the cecum, appendix, ascending colon, and most of the transverse colon. Tributaries of the superior mesenteric vein include the intestinal veins, iliocolic vein, right colic vein, and middle colic vein. Sound familiar? Once again, that's because the superior mesenteric vein, as well as its tributaries, match that of the superior mesenteric artery and its branches. And lastly, the splenic vein and the superior mesenteric vein merge to form the portal vein, otherwise said as the back of the chair. So ultimately, the portal vein takes blood from all the organs that we already discussed and drains them into the liver. Now moving on to the cable system.
Cable veins are those that drain into the vena cava, either the superior or inferior vena cava, without going to the liver first. This means it's pretty much every vein in the body that we didn't previously discuss. That being said, I think it's worth mentioning a few of these veins specifically. We'll do uppercuts to discuss these. Why? Because blood from these veins takes a direct uppercut shot back to the heart. Start punching. First are the renal veins. These are paired veins that drain blood from the kidneys directly into the inferior vena cava. Second are the gonadal veins, which include the testicular vein in males and the ovarian veins in females. Both the testicles and the ovaries begin development within the abdomen and then descend into their proper location, i.e. the scrotum or the pelvis. As they descend, they drag their blood supply with them. Thus, the gonadal veins originate more superiorly than their actual positioning. The left and the right gonadal veins also differ by the vessel into which they drain. The right gonadal vein is going to drain directly into the inferior vena cava while the left gonadal vein takes an indirect path, first draining into the left renal vein. This all makes sense since the inferior vena cava is positioned more toward the right side of the body. Drainage of the left gonadal vein, however, has clinical implications in that compression of the left renal vein may also affect the ability of the left gonads to drain. Nutcracker syndrome, or renal vein compression, most commonly results from a superior mesenteric artery that exits the aorta at too acute of an angle, thereby pinching the renal vein. In addition to causing renal hypertension, varicocele of the left testicle may also occur. Thirdly, I'd like to highlight pelvic veins that drain into the internal iliac vein which drain into the common iliac vein and then into the inferior vena cava. This includes veins that drain the bladder, uterus, cervix, prostate, and inferior one-third of the rectum, amongst others. And lastly, we need to discuss the hepatic veins. These three veins drain blood from the liver into the vena cava. Because these veins drain the liver, rather than going to the liver, they are considered to be part of the cable system. Now for the fun part. I will test your knowledge by calling out a vein and you do one of the exercises based on whether that vein drains via the portal system or via the cable system. I'll give you a few seconds to think about it before I join in with the answer. Uterine vein. This drains into the internal iliac, so it's part of the caval system. Esophageal veins. Did you struggle with this one? That's because both answers are correct. The distal portion of the esophagus represents an area of porticaval anastomosis meaning that the esophageal veins can drain into the portal system via the left gastric vein or into the caval system via the azagous vein that drain, then drains into the superior vena cava. This is clinically relevant because if blood is backed up within the liver due to portal hypertension, blood can be rerouted back to the heart via the esophageal veins. Sounds good, right? Well, the problem is that the esophageal veins may then become engorged, resulting in esophageal varices. If one of these dilated vein ruptures, then severe bleeding may occur. And this is considered a medical emergency. Ovarian veins. The ovarian veins drain into the inferior vena cava. Remember that the right one does so directly, 
while the left one does so via the left renal vein. Rectal veins. Ah, another tricky one because there are three rectal veins. The superior rectal vein drains into the inferior mesenteric vein, so it's part of the portal system. The middle and the inferior rectal veins either drain directly or indirectly into the internal iliac vein, which is part of the caval system. Thus, this is another area of portocaval anastomosis. Once again, if the portal system is backed up due to portal hypertension, the blood can reroute itself using the middle and the inferior rectal veins to return to the heart. The shunting of blood and consequential increase of pressure through the collateral veins causes varicosities. Anorectal varices, however, are less serious than esophageal varices as they are less prone to bleeding. And even if the bleeding does occur, they are in a more accessible location to control the bleeding. Hepatic veins. Remember, these three veins drain the liver, so are part of the caval system. And lastly, the paraumbilical veins. Okay, fair enough. We never discussed these, but this is another area of porticaval anastomoses. These veins can either drain into the portal system or the caval system. They drain into the cable system via the superficial epigastric vein. Dilation of these vessels results in a condition known as caput medusae because the engorged veins radiate out from the umbilicus in a fashion that resembles Medusa's head of snakes. Hope this was a knockout review of venous drainage of the abdomen and pelvis.